he goes, uh, where, where's my car? And I'm like, you're, you're fucking kidding, right? And oh then I God. look down, broken glass all over the fucking ground, oh. and the car's gone. And, and the fucking laugh, car's gone. If he literally said, dude, where's my car? He did. Well, he didn't say dude, but he was like, he was like, <laughs> oh, no. he was like, uh, I shouldn't laugh, dude. I, I, I feel the, I literally we, feel we actually, anxiety for We this. actually laughed yeah. on our way home about it, but like, he was like, uh, where's That's my gotta car? That's got to be the name of the episode there. Yeah. Dude, where's my car? For real. Seriously. <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> The Shug, Shane Hollister, Logan Anaiken, Lyndon Ehlers, Wrestling with Music and Life for Life. <laughs> Wrestling with Music and Life, episode 42, and uh, it's hotter than shit, but uh, that's not the, uh, the, the heat of the conversation that we're going about to talk about because there's been some life heat that Chuggy's been dealing with this weekend. And, uh, oh, yeah. I can't wait to hear the Fuck story, it, buddy. Hey. I've seen the posts. Oh, my I've God. seen the jargon and I loved it and I hated it. Obviously yeah. I don't want you to be in, you know, right in any sort of bad situation, but there was a, po- there was a point where I was like, well, you are in Chicago. True. Right. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about that. All right. So, We'll tell the story of what happened, then we'll go into uh, the storyline of the, the weekend or whatever. Yeah. So the um, we headed up to the show. Who's we? Uh, me, Eric as Knight, Malik, and uh, I feel like a jerk right now. Um, it's his car too, uh, but he's he comes w- to the ring with Eric as Knight yeah. um, as his uh, manager for SCW uh, or his blackie or whatever his follower. Um, has a sweet ass mask, like an executioner mask that fits him like fucking snug. Yeah. It, uh, well, this, this will be relevant when I say this, it was a $300 mask. Oh, so wow. when I say that it's relevant to the rest of the story. So he gives us a ride up, we get up there and, uh, basically we all, I'm like, don't take your guys' stuff out unless you're booked. Right. And I'm going to try to really fucking hard to get you guys on. So we showed up and it was a fucking nightmare right when we showed up because everybody was waiting outside already. And mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, what the fuck? They didn't let us in the building till we were, I was standing outside with everybody for an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just set up. And like they've never the, set, like the wrestlers were sitting in the back waiting no, or no, no, like no. just people, no, fans no, just standing it's, there. It's, uh, it's people to help. Put the production together, the ring together, all of that stuff before the show starts. Oh, okay. So I had to ride up with those guys. So I'm yeah. like, fuck, you know, I don't have a ride otherwise. Mm-hmm. So I had to leave early. So we're there. They had never set up in this building before. That was a whole nightmare for AEW in general. Apparently, they found out at 11 a.m. yesterday that their insurance policy wasn't up to par, so they had to get a fucking brand new one oh, wow. on the day of the fucking show, which is, I'm, I can't even imagine what kind of nightmare that was. Right. So everybody gets let in. The students, everybody trying to get on the show, starts putting everything together. Okay, that's fine. Show ends. Um. Or before the show ends, the two students that I wrote up with, I actually wrote up with three, but the two students were on the show were like, hey, Shug, we're going to take our stuff back to the car. Do you want to bring yours back? And I'm like, you know what, man? No, I'll just wait for the, for the end of the show, mm-hmm. um, and then I'll, I'll take mine back. So end of the show happens. They have to – my thing is when I was that kid, you have to help completely tear down until they're like, all right, you can go. Pay your dues. Yeah. So – I stuck around for them that they're my ride, mm-hmm. you know, it is what it is. So on our way back, we were like four blocks down from the motherfucking venue. So we're walking up to the car. Malik walks up and is standing in the parking spot. And he, the, <laughs> he goes, uh, where, where's my car? And I'm like, you're, you're fucking kidding. Right. Oh and then I look down, broken glass all over the fucking ground, oh. and the car's gone. And, and the fucking laugh, car's gone. If he literally said, dude, where's my car? He did. 
Well, he didn't say dude, but he was like, he was like, <laughs> oh, no. he was like, uh, I shouldn't laugh, dude. I, I, I feel the, I literally we, feel we actually, anxiety for We this. actually laughed yeah. on our way home about it, but like, he was like, uh, where's That's my gotta car? That's got to be the name of the episode there. Yeah. Dude, where's my car? For real. Seriously. <laughs> fuck up. But That's like, fucked. Uh, we're standing there and I'm looking down and I see the broken glass. I'm like, dude, really? The one thing I left in the fucking car is the one thing I'm always afraid to leave in a venue and not put back in my bag is my fucking car keys and my house keys. Yeah. They were in the car. Oh. So all these kids that I rode up with, these students, their gear, their masks, their, all their entrance stuff, dude, Eric's fucking boots alone were $300. Jesus. So like there was a lot of money when it comes to wrestling that was fucking stolen with the car. Like it's like fuck, dude. So it, was a, it was a parking lot full of cars. Or it was like just, uh, it's a but it was it, the crazy thing is there's no cameras around. Uh, and they don't give a shit, you know. Yeah. Well, Chicago, you don't give a shit. We all know you don't. It's fine. That's why Whatever. a lot of people have cameras in their cars. Now. Yeah, like fuck, seriously. You know, or, especially or, in Chicago. Or a though. fucking GPS. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, go ahead, take off with this and see see how far you go. Yeah. When I can fucking find it anyway. Yeah, and I, what type what type of vehicle he would had it? a Kia, have a GPS? Kia. Uh I don't know what it was, but it was a Kia. And apparently I'm like in my head, I'm like, dude, how the fuck do you have like the like do you, do you have the key that actually goes in or do you have like what, whatever where you push the button? Yeah. Apparently the push button ones, if you have that and don't have to push the key in, those are easily fucking stolen all the time. Oh. So he didn't have that. But a Kia Soul, apparently, if you break it open the fucking uh, steering column, it's really easy to fucking, you know, hot wire and fucking take off. Yeah. Which is insane, but... Fuck, oh, man. Yeah, fucking wild, dude. That's... And that was with Eric and Malik. That was our second time leaving Chicago where something fucking stupid happened. Like, Eric's car took a giant shit on us when we were leaving... Uh, what was it? It was the last AEW show out of Berwyn. His fucking transmission just was like... Mm. And then we had to wait two hours or an hour and a half for somebody to come back and pick us up. Damn. This time we didn't have to wait that long, but we had to do all like the cop interviewed everyone because of all their possess- possessions are in the fucking car. You're like, oh, fuck, this is going to take forever. Yeah, nobody's. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I, you, you could find your shit tomorrow, but like nobody. <sighs> yeah. Just the feeling of knowing that like somebody has your shit. Oh, like, dude, it's yeah. expensive stuff. So, yeah. Like, it's not. It's not like everyday stuff, like Eric and Malik. And that mask was specific to him. Yes. So I guess I, I guess if you did see yeah. something on eBay, right, or something, right, then then you would know. Like and this it is took specific him, to him. It took him about. He I think he said it took him five months to get that mask. Jeez. So like he's supposed to do an SCW show on Friday. Mm. You know, like. I mean, that reminds me of, like, every time I ever hear or see, which happens often in Chicago, yeah, um, like a band that comes through and they get all of their shit stolen. And it's like, uh, especially like Derek would be a perfect example. He has, like, I probably shouldn't say it, but I mean, he obviously plays shows. People see right. him online, so whatever. Right. But he has a, uh, a guitar that's specific to him. I mean, it's a Keisel, K-I-E-S-E-L. I believe is how it's spelled. And uh, they are like a custom maker. It's yeah. just like that custom mask that the guy has, right? You pay for quality. You know, like Derek is an upper echelon player. He's pro. And he wanted something that was specific to him. And he got it. And it's like, dude, somebody just stole that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that I fucking sucks. Well, think about it all <clears throat> Malik and Eric's like gear. Mm-hmm. That's waist size, like everything measurements. It was made for them. Right. It is the same thing. Like it's all, like it's made to fit them. It's their their gear. Well, I think that's when you become a pro, as you start to be like, you know, actually, I I, I don't really like this type of boot when yeah. I'm wrestling. Like, yeah. and I, I like this specific brand because I don't know just how it makes you feel. I don't know, but I know that that that's for a fact with instruments, and I know. Like, I, you know, again, I, I like, man, just to, just the setback 
I guess, yeah. in itself really sucks. But obviously, you know, that's how he gets around in life. And and somebody out there just decided whether they were poor or whatever, desperation. I don't whatever know. Whatever they're going I know, I know we shit. are all we were all poor. Right. The people that right. have been on this podcast. So I get that, you know, you feel like a piece of shit sometimes if you gotta like maybe go in and steal a loaf of bread, as they say. Yeah. But uh, you know, you do what you ha- have to do, I guess, but it's still shitty, you know, yeah. because that that person it decided to basically ruin a lot of your guys' time in life, but basically what it is. Well, yeah, a fucking you know? a, a man's complete way of life of getting around was fucking stolen. <laughs> that's crazy. Like that. It doesn't shock us though in the Midwest when you say Chicago though. Everybody, well, like, everybody my, goes, yeah. It's Chicago. I get you know. it, but it, in my head, I've never. You always think you're like, oh, that fucking shit never. You know, it happens, yeah. but it, it won't happen to me. You That's always what think everybody that. says. It, it, it won't wood. happen to me. <laughs> and I was lucky enough, and I'm fucking. I don't know what happened. What was going through my head? I was like, no, I'll just take my gear out. Like when the show's over. Yeah. And. Uh, Fuck, dude. You know, like I have a three hundred dollar fucking Mad Max replica jacket that I, then I invested my time in to stud out with the shoulder pad and the arm and all that stuff. Yeah, that was my time invested into already a uh, two hundred fifty dollar jacket. Mm. Like that was stolen, and then my slaughter prevail mask, although broke in my bag. Yeah, that's a hundred fifty dollar mask. Um, my wrestling shoes that I buy. Our Otomics, those are a hundred and like eighty five dollars. Like those, the, those shoes are not fucking cheap. And I, like I said, that you want to be comfortable. And the thing that's like, you know, you want to move and do your thing comfortably. Those are the my favorite mm-hmm. shoes I've ever wrestled in my life. Uh, RVD wears them. Kurt Angle wears them. They're just fucking. It's kind fantastic. of funny you mentioned that because I was just watching a podcast and uh, Sami Zayn was on it with. Uh... Andrew Santino. It's pretty good. Yeah. Whiskey Ginger is his uh, Andrew Santino's podcast, but um, they always compare him to him because they're both gingers and they look similar, I suppose, but not really. But uh, he, <laughs> he talks about his boots. Yeah. And he literally said, you know, I've gotten 10 years out of these and I'm going to get 10 more out of these new ones. You know, he's talking like he's so fucking got he's got so much money now. Being oh, yeah. But he's still like the specific boots they're worn in now, you know, like, <laughs> like I don't want a different boot. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's why like his boot color didn't really change is because he's wearing the same boots for a reason Yeah, because they feel the most comfortable. Yeah. When you're, when you've been doing it for so fucking long mm-hmm. in the same brand or I I'm lucky enough to be able to buy a brand with like Sammy's boots. Those were made those were made when he ordered them for his size, for his measurements and everything. Mm. So like, dude, that's different. That's a whole, that, that's why uh, pro wrestling boots is like uh, sometimes up to 300 or more dollars a fucking, you know, for two of them. Like, well, you know? It's like, I, I don't want to say this because I guess, you know, it, it's just like, okay, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say this strippers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they have specific boots. They do, and I know, I know, like they do. I'm comparing everything we just said to strippers, but I'm saying like well, the pros. Like yeah. obviously, you know, everybody I believe at one point, if you're an adult, have gone to a strip club, and you've seen people right, right. do their thing, and you've said, oh, okay." Whatever, like it didn't affect you, but then you see like an actual pro that comes in from out ta- out of town, yeah, and she's got like her gear, like a pro wrestler, bro, yeah, and it's gear expensive. bag, everything, yeah. I mean, and she's just doing her thing way better than everybody else, and then that's what you pay. You pay quality, right? And you're like, oh, okay, I get it. That goes with you know, like I said, with the instrumentation. But I was just trying to find something else, you know, comfortability, yeah, comfortability. You know, like Garrett or Derek's guitar, like. Fucking, it's got to be comfortable for him to play what he needs to play. Well, specific, it's like, his eight string. Let me tell you what what's unique about that. Maybe not so much as I'm saying this. I, you know, I haven't done research for months, but uh, there is not, there is not a lot of um, eight string guitars with the tremolo. So you know the whammy yeah, bar, whammy bar, right? Yeah, that. I mean, there's like only one or two people out there. Tosin Abasi from Animals as Leaders has his own signature model, but I, I think he even has a lot of them are, don't have the trim bar, you yeah. know. 
So like Derek has one that has a trim bar on it. So like he actually has an instrument out there. Uh, tailor than, made, tailor, tailor made, made for him, for him yeah. and his, like you say, comfortability. That is a huge thing on guitar. Me, like with my Ibanez, which isn't up there, but my that guitar has a really thin neck, and I realize like I really like thin necks. It doesn't matter because I suck fucking dick anyway at it. But <laughs> you know, uh, I just look. I just like that was like maybe three years, four years in, I was like, man, guitars actually feel different, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't sit down and fucking, you know, do what Derek did and play for eight hours and shit, you know, as a child. But I think, I think uh, especially with the, the situation, well, we should just ask this. Was the match at least good? I mean, was oh, the show good? Oh, the show <laughs> fucking, honestly, what was awesome is me and Ja got to open the show. And there's yeah. already built up heat and... um. I could show you the promo, but it's hard. Like, if you don't follow uh, AW on Facebook, you can't see the promo I cut after I turned heel on him in Berwyn. But I cut this promo. Basically, I'm blurring the lines of, like, I wasn't a part of Black and the Brave, but when you come out of Black and the Brave, I'm kind of the finishing school. You know, yeah. you sit down with Uncle Suge, and, you know, you learn wrestling. Yeah. So, Ja was a part of that. So... I turned on Jossie and I cut this promo and basically said, I help teach you to put food on your plate, on your table. And then I just started snapping. I was like, and then like they bleeped out everything, but I can say everything on here. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> I'm flipping the fucking table over and making you eat off the fucking ground where you belong. And that I was on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I like it. I said that. And I said, uh, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You're the first on my list. And then, like, we ran with... I kept running with that. I kept running with the fact that I was going to yeah. teach him a lesson. And that was that was the whole thing. I was like, I'm going to teach you a lesson. Yeah. So he comes out, ball of fire. Uh, and this is my favorite, because, like, we keep doing this. I don't mean to do it, but we do it, and it still makes... It, it still works. Yeah. So, because you know somebody's going to go over time. We went technically almost two minutes under time that they gave us. Nice. And we could have slowed down with certain things, but I rewatched it back today. And I know uh, Ja was a little down on himself. He's like, man, fuck, dude. You know, ah, damn it. I was like, dude, I'm going to tell you right now, anything we had planned or you thought you were a miss, they have no fucking idea because that was there. It was everything was there, you know. You know, it's funny is I still do that, and I haven't played a show for like six years. <laughs> <About that last. laughs> like, oh man, I should have said this. Yeah. Like it literally wouldn't have mattered, except for in my head, I feel like it mattered to the one person that I was trying to look at. Uh that's good. That's yeah. ca that's called pro. Like yeah. you think about your performance. And you say, I could have done this, this, and this. And anyway, get back to it. You got, obviously, so, so you guys kicked we, killer we, it. we fucking killed it. We opened the show, and I wasn't getting a lot of heat, but the finish. The open a show, the fucking pull the ref in front of me. He moves the referee out of the way, roll up, hook the fucking tights for the three, and I roll out of the ring all smiling. Just I like, love hey, it. hey, eat my ass, buddy. I told you. Oh, what are I you double J in it right now? <laughs> yeah. The, one of the greatest yeah. of all time, in my opinion. I oh, fucking hate dude. that people shit on him still. You know what? Because he's the great real heel. He was a real fucking heel, and yeah. that's why he was so fucking good. Dude, to this I, day, he still is. I can't wait until you call somebody worth less than worthless. Dude, he's next. <laughs> 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 so... I, I roll out of the ring, do that, and immediately I have to go downstairs. And like I'm, uh, Trent walks up to me. He's one of the, he's a part of the production crew, but also was a wrestling fan before, but also plays bass, if I'm not mistaken, in a fucking band, in a metal band. Oh, okay. So he's a musician too. So when I talk metal with him, we talk horror movies and stuff. We were doing that. So I roll out of the ring and I'm coming down the stairs. He's like, you ready to cut a promo? I'm like, I guess. But like my mouth is so dry during promo. It sounds like I have a lisp because my oh, mouth is man. like dry. So fucking dry. <laughs> but I cut the promo and it, a lot of it's shoot. And I said, uh, I said, Jossie, I can, I can see all the stuff you're doing this traveling, you know, you're becoming a star. You forget that I've been there. I've done that. Mm -hmm. But also you forget you're expendable. 
I broke my leg on a Sunday. I was supposed to be on the very first Evolve show the following right. Saturday, and I never got a phone call back. Mm. And I said, with this guy right here with the chip on his shoulder, I'll break any limb. I don't care. If you want to keep going down this road, this old dog's got a lot of fight left in him. That was kind of it, but I was I like yelling, it. obviously. And then I told, I told, I'm like, the thing is, there's so much that we, me and Jock could do. It's like, I was like, dude, we have this fucking giant, like, uh, like it was like, instead of just like this, like little platform to paint a picture, we have this huge fucking screen to paint a picture on. And it's like, dude, let's just go with it. And I have so much in my mind of like fucking blurring the lines of like, oh, is this real? Is this not? Fucking what's going on right now? Right. So. The Shook's stealing everyone's girlfriend like Chicagoans are stealing cars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck them, motherfuckers. If you said something about like a car stealing. Like being stolen or something in your promo or oh, something. Oh yeah, I'll fucking <laughs> and then sneak you walk in out, there. You're like, fuck, that makes sense. Ah, shit. Right. <laughs> Brought it to the universe, you know. Well, I cheated to win. Well, and, and I, <laughs> I wanted to say something. I love is uh, I, I won't say the name, but uh, let's just say a fan had a post and said, uh, "Fuck you, you cheated." <laughs> yeah, and I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Still real to me, damn it. Oh, dude! That's all I'm gonna say. Somebody put that in the fucking comments. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. So yeah, I'm glad I said that. Like-minded individuals. Oh, dude! And that was the only show this weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just had that one. Um, okay, but like the rest of the show, like honestly, the fir- if you would have gave the first six matches, like if me and Ja would have got like. Let's say eight to ten. Yeah. And then the first six matches were just the card. Would it would have main event in any show? It would have been a fucking perfect show up and down. Uh Jake something and Fred uh Haye mm. fucking killed. Okay. Killed, dude. I mean uh, me and Dave Stage were talking about Fred. Um nobody moves like Fred. Even me and Crotch were standing next to each other because Crotch did evolve. He came up and did evolve, or he did not evolve. He came up and did a live, um, which is a pre-taping before the show. Um, but we're standing there. He's like, he should never be heel. I was like, oh, see, I know where you're going right now. He goes, because he's too good. Like you right. gotta get that shit up because that's what they. That's the reason they won't turn me heel on SCW. Yeah, is they they're like you're just too good. You move too good. I'm like, you gotta get the fuck over that. There's uh, first off the art authority is already built that I'm the old guy trying to hold onto a spot. Right. Come on. Turn yeah. the heel. Fucking come on. I think it makes sense to yeah, turn your heel. Exactly. Yeah. And I can fucking control up and down when it goes and like, dude, that shit works, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyways, we're sitting there watching Fred and uh Jake something. Jake something is the strongest fucking human being I've ever been in the ring with in my life. Guy's fucking just a beast. But um, they're just killing it, bro. They killed it. And they, Fred moves different and does things different. Um, uh, you know the corner post? Instead yeah. of being round, uh, these ones are like a uh, a square. Okay. But the, the square is open at top. So Fred took Jake's arm and put it inside the post and worked his arm inside the post like he couldn't get it out. Like his arm was swelling because of all the, like him beating it up so much that his arm was swollen and it was stuck inside the post. I was like, that is some fucking outside of the box fucking stuff, dude. It's so cool. And like I was watching, I was like, this is just just so good. Like Fred, Fred Haye is fucking awesome. And so is Jake something. They're both really good. That could have been the main of the main event of the show, but it wasn't. Of course, that was the main event of the first half of the show. Hmm. That's okay. what I'm getting. What I'm getting to. Um, anyways, there was a lot of good storytelling throughout the show. Uh, fucking Davy Vega and uh, Levi had this fucking banger of a match, dude. And again, I walked up to both of them and I'm like, "You guys did what pro wrestling is, like, just to a fucking T. Nice. Like nobody did like a crazy run spot, strike spot, none of that shit." People were invested 
in like legit like the like the dramatic part of the match of like there was yeah. so much built up against Levi that it was just mad dude watching it made me feel like a wrestling fan again I was like this is what makes me fucking love pro wrestling yeah and then the main event is the complete opposite. It's for all those marks at home going, oh, I love when they do a bunch of stuff and drop me tummy and all these tongue in the head. Don't get me wrong. Guarantee that, there wasn't a flip in it. Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of the fucking flips. I'm flipping you the bird. I'm going to tell you right now, but fucking yeah. Davey and Levi's match was so fucking over mm. without having to do all that stupid shit. But uh, Gringo Loco is known. He's for, He's Lucha. He's uh, is Chicago. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that my brother? Yeah, Chicago Loco, a Chicago native who That's actually when moved. he's on Four Loco. Bro. Oh yeah, he becomes Gringo Loco, <laughs> even though that actually means white man. Right? He does like white boy or something, yeah. but uh, or crazy white boy, Gringo, crazy white boy. Yeah. That, that Loco, sense, yeah. Loco is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was Loco Magnum on uh, Diablo <laughs> in two thousand three. So Gringo has been wrestling as long as me and yeah. like, it took a long time for him to finally get his due. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm happy for him. I'm yeah. really am. But like, here's the opposite side of the spectrum is you are, you know, you're just running through all this stuff. You're doing all this stuff. It just becomes stuff. Mm. And then you're watching a flash. It's like, it becomes just, uh, the ending of a firework show. But it's just the ending of the fireworks show, then it's over. Right. You know what I mean? There was no build up. There's just and then the finish after all the stuff they did was just a regular reverse Rana. The guy does a forward roll, jumps up, diamond cutter for the finish. Mm-hmm. After a reverse Rana from the top rope, a Spanish fly from the top rope, like just all this shit. And then that's the finish. It's yeah. like, what what are we doing? What are we doing here? Move there, to move, wait, move what, to move. What, what's, but the thing is, like, the crescendo should always be the biggest pop. Or right before the, or like the biggest pop, then you go home. Especially yeah. as a heel. You know, you, how do you get him higher? How do you get him higher? Like, dude, that doesn't bring him higher. You did like the opposite. But again, there are marks at home going, that's pro wrestling. I just I love it. And then you know what? They can't even walk fucking five steps with, without being out of breath you fat piece of shit get out of your mother's he's basement he's talking about me <laughs> <laughs> mouth breather but like uh, yeah no I think uh, especially with uh, you know th- the things that MGF is preaching and like just like what we were talking about last episode it, it is true though that like wrestling kind of needs to do a, a different approach because it's, it's uh, happening, you dude. allowed you allowed the fans to have too much of an opinion. That's yes. what it is. Yes. Whereas you know, twenty years ago, everybody had been like, "I don't give a fuck what the fans say. They're going to get what they get." Right now, of course, they were trying to write good stories. So, like, what does that mean? That just means, like you said, sometimes a fucking flip has nothing to do with anything that's happening. And everyone is paying attention to the shit talking or something like yeah. in a heated uh, uh, angle where where someone's leaning on somebody and they're like, fucking classic example. Ric Flair's last match with Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Did you not want to cry? Did you cry? Oh, I did. Should cry. I cried. I'm pretty sure I watched you cry. Yeah, I was next to you. I and I had like no tears because your, I was looking at Hooters girls. Yeah. And <laughs> your cousin Shane and I can was yes. the one who was consoling me. He was like, you, you got too much of a big heart, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and I couldn't cry. Um, yeah. But either way, uh, we, we, uh, we seen that and said that was Better than anything they did in the entire match. Oh, dude. just that last part. Well, now of course, well, the, the whole end, so it should the whole be the best match part. was the whole telling match was that great. story. Yeah. Though, yeah, it, that, that's the thing about Sean and mm-hmm. Rick is if, if you walk it, watch it from top, from beginning to end, even the beginning video of all the promos, because like that's how you're supposed to do it. Like everything. Yeah crescendos to the end so you just put all this fucking compilation video of all these promos and words said and things done yeah. and then the match happens it's just like dude you watch all you that have to say is vince mcmahon and shane mcmahon versus hbk and god as his tag team right 
<laughs> fucking can you believe I that? that i didn't i didn't Keep, watch wrestling during that time oh, period. Me I, I, was, I was already checked out i just i but just I can't I believe watch that one i just I watched, can't. I watched like highlights of it and they of course he loses yeah but it's fucking great because vince is like i told you i am god yeah it's great <laughs> it's fucking fantastic like, they didn't even have to have a match their no. promos were so no. good they did weird shit where yeah. like there was a spotlight coming down the ramp and he's like Come on, God! Come on! Come on, God! Fucking <laughs> over but the But it was top. good because that character, Vince McMahon... Oh, he's um, like the devil. ...is pretty much the devil. Yeah. I mean, that, that is what it is. The devil who is in control. Yeah. And, uh... Or, the boss. That's really all you have to say. Yeah. Like, and nobody likes their boss. That's kind of like the stereotype i mean there's a lot of good bosses out there yeah, but yeah, i'm just yeah. saying like and, and in reality he actually was a really good boss he was a really good human because what we're kind of getting to is that sometimes people need to be told something they don't want to hear i think most very true and just very in true. life in general but in pro wrestling if you've seen jossie do something i'm just I, i'm just using him as an example right and you go dude that's not good yeah. what you're doing don't do it. Makes no sense to your character. He might go, man. I thought about this for like months because I love what I'm doing. Right. No, so <laughs> and it breaks the spirit, but it's called it's called constructive criticism and tough love and tough and, love. And, and Jimmy, that's Vince McMahon. Vince Jimmy, McMahon fired so many people oh, and yeah. made them better in doing so. By the way, right. But continue. Jimmy Jacobs walked up to me one time. I fuck. I fluffed a reversal and it looked like shit. He goes. Shane, if you can't do something before the match and you, you know you can't or you just think you can, yeah, you need to know you can. And if you can't, don't fucking do it. Like, yeah. you know, you look like a fucking idiot out there, you know? Well, like, like he didn't say that to me. That's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Basically. But he was like, if you can't do it, don't do it. All right. You know? Because some people try to do shit that's. I've done it before, but if I can't nail it all the time, Rings of Saturn, right? <laughs> so uh, that was always a running joke in death metal. It's like these fucking guys can't fucking play that shit. They slowed it down, and, and in my I opinion, didn't even I'm like, fucking know that. Hey man, it's it's creativity, right? Like, so there's two ways of looking at it. Okay, so just to set that up a little bit for people, because they're like, what? There was a band. There is a band. I think I could be wrong. They might I might not be a band anymore. They had a lot of controversy around the the main dude in the band. I believe he was like a meth head or something, but I don't want to speak. I don't know. So I probably shouldn't say that. Anyway, the band had controversy around the fact that they were playing shit that was insane. Yeah. And people were like, Definitely. these players, right, are page yells just, just lightning fast. Are They have to be the greatest on the fucking planet, right? What was that? Uh, and when you get to a certain level of like musicianship, People start to be like, you know, this is just the the fan. They do this with pro wrestling too. Oh yeah, uh, they back chair or armchair quarterback. Um, they, uh, you know, they basically say, hey, you know, this 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 person I watched live did not play that at that speed, and that becomes a thing. With oh death yeah, metal, right. Because your whole thing in death metal. T- Technical death metal. I it's, guess the speed has to be. It has like, to match. You it has to, to be what well, you no, fucking like hear. What you said, or Jamie Jacob said, you yeah. need to know that you can do it and actually be able to do it before you try it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, with metal death metal, you like can't it, just record it, that. You don't record something you can't play live. <laughs> exactly. Lena talks about that. I right, talk about that right. a lot. Yeah. Even with vocals, I would do something and I'd go. I'd record something and I'd go. Oh, I can't fucking do that life. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I would. I would literally die. That reminds me of the story of Lyndon when you like that part with uh, fucking Danny. He goes, man, that's gonna be really hard to do live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and and especially because they're not. I guess the easy thing is when you're recording, you're not sitting there with your guitar and singing. Yeah, you're doing it separately so that you can get the best performance. Out of any take, if you had a guitar in your hand the entire time you were doing that, it would, it, which never happens in right. recording uh, history. You, well, I shouldn't say that. Old bands used to do what would you call live uh, recordings, and and that is actually, by the way, that is starting to come back because people are realizing that authenticity is starting to go away when our modern age teaches us in music. There is a certain way you can do things and it'll sound good. 
and right. they, they, it's formulaic, right? So when you look at it, you say, even for pro wrestling, you can do a thousand moves because you, right. you, people's attention is yeah. bad. Uh, yeah. Their their attention is at a deficit. We're starting to realize, though, and I think uh, I'm going to explain this. Actually, you'll you'll understand this. I was thinking about this yesterday. Um, it's called short form, short form, long form, right? Yeah. So short form is the attention span of a lot of people this day, right? Long form is how we grew up because long form, we wanted to see an entire album that we liked, not just two songs from the band. Yeah. Long form. We wanted half the time that shit fucking lets you down. You're like, man, those, are, those were fucking great. Dude. Prime example. Uh, example. Sixth. The band. S A S I K T H. If anybody is interested in, in what we're talking about, I fucking loved this, this song bland street bloom. It's it was fucking, fucking awesome. amazing. Killer, it still is killer an amazing fucking song. song. Good chorus. Good fucking. It's two singers, and it's super interesting. And they did something. And then I listened to their album, and I fucking about cried because yeah, I was like, it's "Wow, fucking let down." There was there was like a part where they were talking about eating baked beans on a street. Like it was like, what is fucking happening right now? Because the band that I heard from their single that they dropped before they dropped the entire album was fucking phenomenal. And then what? And I couldn't listen to it. After a while, I would be like, "All right, I'm done with you that." You know what that is? What? Long premature form. ejaculation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's what you were getting at. A thousand moves. Yeah, you just did a power bomb right away. Hey, sometimes you can fit it into a story oh, if yeah, you're smart. The guy's eight foot tall, like Omos. Oh, fuck yeah, have him power bomb you. Yeah, for sure. And by the way, the only way you win that is when he goes to power bomb you. You have a fucking hammer, and when fucking when he's hit up, him, in you just fucking. <laughs> Cause and you straight up Koopa him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mario <laughs> Brothers, you just fucking, bam! You got Koopa, you idiot. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's the name uh, of the episode right man. there. You I got like, Koopa, you idiot. I like, dude. Where's my car? Well, that's pretty good too, though. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Well, either way, yeah. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> no, you know with the hammers. You know, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, you know yeah. What I'm about. I just feel like, especially with with uh, what we're talking about, long form. I fucking know is coming back, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Who ushered in long form? His name we can all know is Grandmaster Rogan. Joe Rogan speaks for three fucking hours, yeah, instead of just twenty minutes, yeah. Okay, and he has some people on that are so fucking interesting that the three hours go by in 20 minutes. And so what's happening yeah. now is people are starting to realize like you're invested oh, into wait, what they're saying exactly. because it's actually, they are actually teaching you something too. Cause like, or their stories, like their stories of these people he brings on yeah. are just like, Holy fuck. It pulls you in. You're just like, oh, just well, like what I like, you know, yeah. psychology wise. Why does it make sense that we love the bands we love is and, and especially we judge them by the story of eight to 10 songs, right? Yeah. The full length. We judge them by that because the reason is, is when we go see like a band, I'm just going to shadows fall. Yeah. There's 15 songs that you want to hear. Yeah. Right. So what's great about it. Is their storytelling now because they know that there's 15 songs you want to hear. When are you going to hear that song? Yeah, you know, and, and and really, like I, I am not. I wish I was playing a lot more and whatever. And I, I'm tr I'm trying to actively work towards that. But like, uh, even like one thing, uh, you're my best bud. But I'd look down and I'd see uh, when we'd play uh, the weakening, and you'd go, yeah. <gasps> "Fuck yeah, that's the riff. Yeah, that's dude. the song, Fuck and it. that." Love like that, that song, little dude. interaction, that's what they're doing all the time with these bands that we love. They're like, oh, we can't wait to put in the song when we want to put in the song. Right. And they look down and see, dude, of course, if you're going to see Pantera and uh, not not necessarily me, but right. like if you're going to see Pantera and uh, you're like kind of a fan, but whatever. But then they play walk. Yeah, everyone goes, well, fuck yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 you know, yeah. everybody I, goes, fuck yeah. For me, of course, it'd be like something like if they played, uh, well, sleep, the sleep. Yeah. Um, and, and again, I know they're, they're working on doing newer songs. They just brought back war nerve, which is cool. I love a uh, new yeah. level. New yeah, new level. Fucking, oh man, that'd be cool to hear that. Rad. Becoming uh, anything off yeah. of uh, 
obviously in the first three albums, all of their albums, but like, yeah. like the first three, if somebody hit, he came in with fucking five minutes alone, that shit makes me want to kick somebody in the fucking chest. But you're also, we love that so much, that long form album that you literally know the next song and yeah. you start humming the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yes. I've watched true. you do it. It's true. Yeah. Right? When we're outside and you got yeah. your fucking Milwaukee and you're about yeah. to do shit and then it stops and you go, it doesn't even happen yet. It's fucking you fucking it's engraved in you at this point, you know? And that is how pro wrestling needs to become again. It just needs to refer back to what it was. Yeah. You slow things down and you make things more emotional. It's not that hard and and I say that, of course I don't do it, but I just mean it's it's like we we kind of had like a little tiff, not tiff, but like we we had a disagreement, I guess, where I said I rakes. I think that that was probably one of the greatest. Of course, it is. You, of it course, is. if you're, oh, you just said it. Guy's hand got stuck because uh, the swollen uh, thing. Like, how do people? Half the people don't know his hand is swollen or whatever you said. That, right, that's right. Your guy's well, well, it's like his arm is but stuck inside the post. You suspend your disbelief when you're watching this shit right. anyway. Right. So you might as well just think the dude just got eye raked. Right. He'll be fine in like two minutes. Back in the yeah, day. but my thing but, was like when you would my, the most re, the realest thing you could do is I wreck a guy. And just throw him off the ropes. He can't see. He's just going to fall over the top rope or fall through the ropes. And uh, yeah. that would be the realest shit ever. It'd be like, holy fuck, he really can't see. So I see. believe, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, people, um, that happened in the first like the first few games that, that WWE released. Like if you did an eye rake and you threw him against the ropes, they fell out from what I remember. Oh, yeah, you might be you right, that? dude. I think you're fucking right, Because they would dude. fall out, and you'd get, you'd, you'd you'd get just confused. Like, like did they can fall I go the out ring? on the outside of the ring? And then they, I think they just got back in the ring. Like was Somebody like, was smart, bro. Yeah. Somebody I mean, smart well, right That's what I'm games. saying. Like, Ric Flair, obviously, the king of the eye rake. Yeah. King of the back rake. Yeah. Just like Hulkster. He yeah. did both yeah. when he was a heel. Even as a baby face. Even as a baby face, he did it. <laughs> and it makes zero sense. My, my thing by is. By the way, logically, that you, you just scratch somebody's back. That's, when you, when, you're, when you're so fucking over, <laughs> yeah. I've said this to people, when you're so fucking over, especially yeah. if you're in a heated fight. Yeah. Like if Jossie came out there and fucking punch, 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 and like fucking something, something, and he poked me in the fucking eye, he'd still be over. Because right. he's fucking over as fuck as baby face. You yeah. Know? So like it well, works, man. You can still cheat. Fucking cheat Macho Man beating yeah. fucking Ric Flair and hooking the tights and the entire crowd didn't give a fuck and they all saw it. Cause they didn't give a fuck. Because yeah. they wanted Ric Flair to lose so fucking bad that they did not care that Macho Man cheated. He probably fucked their girlfriends, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he was great on Joe Rogan, by the way. Um, yeah. Definitely, if you're bored, check that out. Rick Flair was on fucking Joe Rogan? Oh, yeah. That was probably oh. only two weeks ago. Uh, it was great. Uh, he just, I mean, he was uh, just, you know, you're talking about Joe Rogan, who really doesn't give a shit about pro wrestling. One but he, he has respect for it. Though. Oh, yeah. He's definitely got respect. Yeah. For it. I think over the years, it's because of uh, uh, Tony Hinchcliffe, his, yeah. his good bud that he has on there, who has Kill Tony, which is also a really good uh, show like a live podcast where they they basically do what uh, you did with the young bucks that you took up there. You know, they just give them tough love and they don't hold back. And it's kind of awkward sometimes you you because you'll watch somebody go on stage and kill Tony because yeah. it's uh, a stand up oh, stand up yeah and oh, you watch fuck, them for the yeah. first time ever and they're horrible Ooh. and they're like a millennial idiot who's a narcissist and then you have Tony Hinchcliffe who grew up on fucking pro wrestling he's a bigger mark than any of us ever were still Fantastic. to this day I love was, it uh, he's on the podcast with Ric Flair he's basically the guy that probably got him on there and Undertaker as well but like uh, what was kind of shitty was like I'd rather have just Rogie with fucking Ric Flair by himself because right. Rogan's talked about Ric Flair he says dude you literally he goes you have a a, a sound attached to your name forever Right. And, Forever. and then he said, well, well you know, because Tony Hinch goes like, yeah. And, and I, what did you come up with that? He goes, well, I was just, you know, driving and I heard uh, 
goodness gracious, good ball of fire or great ball of fire. Woo. Yeah. And I said, at the end of it, he just said, woo, it had nothing to do with the, the hook. And it was just a, a throw, throw away. And he just started doing it. Woo. You know, and it's like those little things and the inspiration that you get from them. Yeah. I, I, I get that all the time, especially for me, I guess what's specific to that would be like vocals, you know, like vocal yeah. patterns or something. I'll all of a sudden it'll just come to me and I'll just be like, what the fuck? Why did that just come to me? You know, I don't know why it's, it's almost like it, it's given to you by whatever, you know, whatever makes art and whatever makes creativity, I suppose. What, you know? what, what did Jack Black yeah. call it when he was uh, in uh, Today's Just D TV show? Inspirado. Yeah, the search for Inspirado is one of the fucking, <laughs> it's what it's called. And he's like, uh, he's like, and then you do, da, da, da. I swallowed a bug. I swallowed a bug. <laughs> <laughs> now it, it it and then they start they like fucking break through the wall for no reason. <laughs> yeah, that that in itself which was uh what I can tell you is different about especially the the tenacious D in the beginning. There's an edge to them. It's an edge. Oh yeah. It's uh adult. Oh, and yeah. they basically didn't shy away from it. And that was kind of like what, again, that was what the time was. And, and now we're always trying to skirt, you know, like you said earlier, you were saying like, hey, I can't really say what I said there. You know, that sucks, dude, because you should be able to say oh, whatever well, the fuck you want to say. They bleeped out yeah. in the promo, which to me is sometimes it makes it more real, even if without having dude, to say MGF. the world. Said yeah, all the f bombs. I know, and it was so good. I know how he places the f bombs yeah. actually makes sense. It's called a stressor word. A yeah. lot of people don't realize that that a curse word, another name for it, is a stressor. Well, of that's your why. Sentence. That's why they give it yeah. uh, PG thirteen. They give it one f bomb, mm. and uh, I don't know why. I <laughs> Who's I they though? You're talking about Hollywood. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you another thing that's happening that I like. Not only is long form coming back, yeah, but the people that are actually the best, meaning like the people that have the credentials, the people that work the hardest, okay, are starting to create some something outside of the system and saying, you know what? Okay. Hollywood, you have existed to basically put everybody down because all you want is that fucking money, right? And that's, you know, that's just uh, 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 with anything. I mean, people, right. you, non-creatives is what I call them, people that are just looking for money. Those people have put people down like you and I for fucking ever in a day. And now people are starting to realize, well, maybe I need to be uh, uh, my own Hollywood which is happening like Daily Wire, you know, all these places, they're making their own movies now. Uh, a big example would be, obviously, like I already said, Rogi, but Rogan was already big as fuck. I mean, he's still getting like, uh, Spotify will put a little disclaimer about COVID, whereas like everything he said was correct from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, but like... So what they, you know, that's not like, that's <laughs> not bad. I'll take no. a PG, I'll take a, like you said earlier, right. a rated R or whatever. But... Outside of the system, how do you do that? You have to do it. It's just like this this podcast doesn't get done if me and you don't show up today right now. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I almost, you know, because of this weirdness of this weekend, we don't have to get into everything. I almost, I, you know, I started the sentence was like, hey, are you sure you want to do it? Because, uh, you know, but uh, thank God you're like, fuck, I need to do this because yeah. it does make you feel good. We might literally just be in a spider hall right now, right? Right. But somebody else is out there and they're listening to it and they're going, you know what? I'm starting this long form shit right now. I'm starting a full length, right? Should I just, maybe they're, they're teetering and they're saying, maybe I just do four songs. Like everybody, oh, I just put up one single, you know, like, and then they don't they have like a whole like fucking an EP, album. An EP. Like an EP. You know, it's like EPs have been around forever and I never understood them. Cause in my head I was like, dude, I have a billion <laughs> ideas. I could make 5,000 full lengths, right? And again, time, right? That That's a huge factor. Yes. But also, like, I don't necessarily know that all of my ideas would sound this, the same, you know, as far as, like, if I just, was like, put out a fucking full length of all of my shit, it'd be silly shit mixed with serious shit mixed with. And, well, that's no, where you, that's best, where you, yeah, that's where you, that's where you 
do this storytelling of like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you could tell the same story, you know, when I, well, if you're trying to like, if you're trying trying to mix everything up, has nothing to do with uh, titanium utopia. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's two different entities. I get into it with Alicia so many times because she always goes, you know, you can just release everything on something and and people love it. Dude, no, you can't I put were, everything on put, one album. If I put, you like, can't do that. This extreme death metal song. The next one is uh, IBS we singing just, about poop. <laughs> we just talked about the band yeah. of that storytelling makes no sense to me. Yeah, it doesn't fucking work. Yeah, because w- when you're given this, um, f- all right. So a single, the first time you ever hear a single of a band, right? You're like. Basically, if it's their very first fucking single, they're going, this is our fucking song. This is who we are. Right. With that first fucking song. So if it's not fucking killer, or if it is killer and the rest of the album is just, dude, that fucking sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? My like, example with Sixth is exactly what I was saying yes. earlier because they literally didn't even sound the same. Like the rest of the songs, I think there was like maybe one that was heavy after that. It was not, it was like almost like rock. That's what I'm talking to gent. about. Like the song was gent. And then all of a sudden it's like a rock album. Like what, what, what the fuck? You're talking about eating baked beans on a river? Like what, what what's I'm, happening? Again, that's what I'm talking about. Like if yeah. you went to mix like Suge Projects with fucking <laughs> titanium <laughs> utopia stuff well, and put can, it on one album, so, you're like, what the so fuck one is thing, happening? They'd always do dual releases. So, oh, but it was yeah. usually within the same genre. So two bands that knew each other on a label, they'd be like, Hey, let's just do a, it's called a split. Yeah. 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 So like I, I would do a split with the Shook project and then titanium utopia. Like if that, if that was, uh, if that made sense, I don't even know that that would even make sense. It like wouldn't. What, why? Like we, we could literally just release it different. And yeah. yes, of course we have the internet now and everything is a lot easier to release. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a success because you have to do a lot more to it after that. You have to actually do things after that. You can't just release it. And I'm I'm appreciative of anybody who's listened to the huh. single that I released. And I really just wanted to release something. I think, you know, of course, for my weird mind, I'm like, oh, I released this way too soon and blah, blah, blah. But then there was a part of me that was like, no, I, I needed to release something, you know, because it... it it signifies the fact that like I'm I'm doing things, yeah, and I have been doing things. You know that I yeah, always you show stopped. everybody. You I, every every time like Lyndon comes, I was like, yeah, show me another one. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's yawning every fucking episode, <laughs> Lyndon. You piece of shit. Uh, Are we fucking boring he's you? Like, he's like, ah, he showed me a new song. I went to sleep. <laughs> I wasn't playing on it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, by the way, I wanted to mention them. They were playing uh, in, in Memphis, it looked like, uh, and uh, they had a little uh, trouble with their gear and oh, fuck. took out their uh, their brand new um, uh, roadie, which was their um, new grill, and uh, it fell apart, and Dan oh, kicked the shit out of it. Did he really? Good job, Dan. That was yeah, a good ass kick. Fuck it. Just, I think they just left it there too in Memphis and didn't give a flying <laughs> shit. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, walking in Memphis. Dan is pretty pro pain. <laughs> you got grilled. <laughs> Ow. This uh, one's good. We're, this <laughs> one's really good so far. I'm fucking loving it. Yeah. You're on fire, my friend, with your He's propane. On fire. <laughs> Man in the night in the scene of night. I fucking don't even know the lyrics, and I hope I was close. Uh, I know. That's, I don't. I don't know. Grand Theft Auto, buddy, and I, that comes full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you Chicagoan pieces of shit! Yeah, you fucking idiots. Oh, I hope there was ice cold beer there at least. I well, you nope. piece of shit. <laughs> they didn't have any strong stuff. I was mm. like, hey, what you got? Well, what you see? And I'm like, oh, fantastic! So no hard liquor. <laughs> no. Well, you can always pop the bottom, and then just. What do you mean? Like slam it? Yeah. (laughs) That's like a liquor shot. If you, well, again, we won't get into the Bud Light thing. I'm sure they had Bud Light because there's Uh, plenty on the shelves. Well, (laughs) there was a lot of paps being sold, actually. Can I book book something? Yes. Booking the territory with sugar and log jammers. All right. 
After this, I do have a story to tell you. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait, but I want to say this. A lot of people out there don't know what the word zeitgeist is. I said it the last time, and I actually got a question. Like, what, what is that? What? Zeitgeist is literally to me. And now, of course, there was a documentary called The Zeitgeist on uh, YouTube, which kind of explained that, like, the elites, and there was a lot of conspiracy in it, but it was pretty much exactly what does happen. Duh. Yeah. Long story short, the zeitgeist just means anything that, like, almost the entire planet will hear about and or care about, I guess. Uh, a lot of people, like, especially a good example is, like, pro wrestling in the Attitude Era with Stone Cold. That was worldwide. It was well, international. It was, like, it was to, in the zeitgeist. Right. To me, it's, like, the pulse on... Like it's like the pulse on the earth, the pulse on the human race is like what's making them fucking go faster. And always, what's making them go? I'm sorry to the rest of the world. It's always the United States. We and, and again, that's not propaganda. People would say, "Well, you you only getting there because you're in the United States, dude." I'm gonna let you know, the United States has always been the culture makers for the rest of the world. Okay. There's a lot of it that not is always that is when it silenced. comes. Oh, of not, course, like if you're talking about like the CCP, China's obviously no, no, taking no, that no, shit no. down. I'm but. talking like when it comes to pro wrestling, Japanese, is, which Japanese are our ally, but they but they've always Japanese. been about five years ahead of us. Even the yes. NWO thing was stolen. You know that, right? So that I, was completely so, stolen. But let me. Okay, but again, okay. no, I'm not I, saying that that's not incorrect because it's definitely correct. I mean. Uh, Americans get inspired, but then what's it? What ends up happening? So the Japanese only get the Japanese. Yeah, the Americans get everywhere, and the reason is because maybe they took the NWO, maybe they took, but they had the best people that have ever done it here. Yes, and and the reason why I know that's a fact is because Rogie's talks. Uh, he's you know one of the greatest stand up com- comedians. There's nobody better than Dave Chappelle. Yeah. He's, he can't the, be he's the greatest of all time. He can't now. be fucking because that. And I only say that because he said that, and every other great has said that. Well, let me just say, there's no Dave Chappelle in Japan. No. Okay. And if there was, he ain't getting everywhere. So maybe it's cornered. Maybe like the market of of uh, uh, art is cornered think- here because we have a farther reach. You know, things like that. We are the empire, right? So uh, well, let me just get back. Okay, that's the site, guys. We've explained it. Let me book something. Well, hang on. Before you go, yeah. you you are – now that after you explain that, you're completely 100% correct because we have every element of everything everywhere. Yeah. So, like, um, in Japan, pro wrestling was, like, you know, strong style, like, stiff, like, straight up wrestler. You're a fucking – wrestler yep. like a real pro wrestler over there there wasn't gimmicks so when they uh, oh there was ca- a cowbell that yeah. was a gimmick well <laughs> like, it's called fucking stand hands motherfucker fuck god damn the wrestling move which i always liked even though like i didn't watch wrestling during the time jbl stole the lariat yeah uh, i'm gonna say that was a mean ass good lariat and he is one of the greatest heels of all time as well jbl is yeah one, you oh, know, fantastic. i know he got it in a lot of shit but fuck it fuck that F- fantastic though. yeah amazing stan and we're talking about japanese strong stri- strong style <laughs> They they invented that. Think about yeah. Vader losing an eye. It was with Stan Hansen. Exactly. Hit you him know, with the cowbell. <laughs> you, no, it wasn't. It was a yeah, fucking it was an accident, Remember, it was a forearm. <laughs> Bam! Hits him in the fucking face. With it the wasn't cowbell. with a cowbell. You sure? Positive. I think it happened twice. No. It was straight up. Mm. They were snugging each other, and Stan is. Uh, I don't know what kind of blind it is where you only see shape. Right. Right. And he fucking hit Vader, and when he hit him, he fucking broke his orbital bone with yeah. his fucking elbow, and Vader took his mask off, which was not supposed to happen. Yeah. And he pushed his fucking eyeball back into his head mm. because it was hanging out. When you break an orbital bone, your eyeball can fall out. Like, that's fucking insane to think about, but, like, he pushed it back in his head. When he did it, it swelled shut. I heard and that night was actually match. pretty eye popping, uh, especially with the crowd. <laughs> but, we need a time. but again, so let me get back to booking because we are again, getting all over the place. Well, I know, but again, we're going to be real usual. quick. Uh, 
Japanese pro wrestling was strong style. There wasn't gimmicks. There wasn't stories. There was just like two dudes fucking, I'm man, I'm man, I am. Mm-hmm. You know, that was it. But they didn't have gimmicks. So back to you. And we had that oh, in America. Okay. If you want heat, Mr. Shuggy Woogie, <laughs> you know, you just have to look at the zeitgeist and pop culture. I almost don't even want to tell you this. Oh, I already know. I already know how to get heat. Why? Why would anyone right now, I'm sure, I hope several people are doing this in pro wrestling, especially because you're storytellers, bro. Not as a heel wear Bud Light. Oh. What? Are you doing right now? Well, first you off, bring you're... Bud Light to the ring. No, it's not going to make you heal. It's not going to make you heal. Oh my god, it is in the Midwest, dude. Oh my god, are you are you insane? What are you? Bud Light, Dylan Mulvaney. They're... Pro wrestling is pro all of that right now. Okay, okay. that whole thing. Well, so me well, wearing a Bud Light better. would do have to be better. the opposite. Do you one better? If that's the truth, that that fucking sucks. But it, anyway, we don't have to get political. Uh, but right, who's in the who's in the zeitgeist right now? Dylan Mulvaney. Is he is he the same as Amber Heard when I booked the ter- territory? Yeah. So you already know what I'm going to say. Oh, fantastic! You need that motherfucker to come out and fucking win your match for you or some shit, right? So that people go. What the fuck is happening in AEW that this dude is coming down? Either I'd be a fucking Sorry, world class dude, whatever. World class <laughs> baby face. Yeah. Or world class heel. Where are we going? That's what I'm saying. You would be in the news instantly. Yeah. It would be almost like when you know you and Weston Wang came down from the helicopter. <laughs> Uh, in Bluegrass uh, Movie Theater. Have you contacted anybody about helicopters yet? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, get to the Because I'm actually going to go do, I'm going to do Danny's show. Get to the chopper! I'm doing Danny's show on the 12th, so oh, good okay. luck with SCW and West End Wing. Oh, yeah, you're not going to be, okay. I'll cut a promo with West End Wing, be like, and what Wang, whatever, does this thing, and be like, hey, I'm sorry I couldn't be there, buddy. Mm. Whatever. All I'm saying is you have to think that People, okay, like Holpster did it at WrestleMania. He literally got Logan Paul, which was really weird, by the way. Uh, I know that he probably might see some of this, but I'm saying, like, it's really weird, by the way, that he's, like, screaming, Logan, Logan. (laughs) (laughs) And I was thinking about me the whole time, like a fucking egotistical bitch. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's literally how he says my name. Like, Logan, Logan, fuck. But that's my point is like he knew Logan Paul is part of the zeitgeist, dude. He's huge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Impulsive. He's, his yeah, yeah. podcast, which is great, is a real it's the number one podcast, I believe. So yeah. like he's on YouTube. Uh I think Joe Rogan has obviously got a lot more reach, but I don't know. I don't really know how they fudge the numbers. But the point is, is like to do that. And put somebody over like that, and and obviously they had an amazing match because Culpster could wrestle a fucking broomstick and be a completely. You fine. know that he came down to the school, was trained with some of the students and Colby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and again, like, wouldn't you want to? Right. Yeah. I mean, especially because he's got all the cash in the world, he'll be he'll be able to fly anywhere and yeah, privately, it. and and I, I guess what I'm saying is like you just look at the zeitgeist of stuff. WWE used to do it all the time, right? That's how do you get Stone Cold over when he's already fucking on fire? How do you get Shawn Michaels over already on fire? Mike Tyson. Yeah. How hard was that? Oh. Not hard at all. Mike Tyson was in so much controversy at the time, too, and he was still put over. And it's like, again, like, how do you get Suge to a level to where AEW or WWE has to talk to him? Right. It's almost like, well... You have to get like a Dylan Mulvaney or somebody. I said Amber Heard and just be like, hey, I don't know how to do this. Listen, I I, I, again, people go like, fuck off. You know, that's impossible. No, it's not like people have done this. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know this doesn't sound like, you know, this would be your pitch. I know this doesn't sound like something you might want to do, but especially Dylan Mulvaney. I know he's he, he, she, whatever the fuck is making a shit ton of money with the the whole thing. You know, regardless, I'm sure he 
that person got a uh, contract uh, oh, yeah. and, and got money from it. But uh, business wise, why would it make sense for somebody like that to go to AAW and put somebody over? Because sometimes the unforeseen is even better. Because yeah. the American people, you know what they would go? Oh, shit. Dylan Volvani can just show up anywhere. <laughs> yeah. If, if they truly yeah. hate yeah. Him, that, you know, scenario. Yeah, character, or if they truly hate that whatever. character or whatever. You know, obviously, it's regardless the idea, of uh, the politics the idea or the human. Or whatever. That's a character. Like, and again, like, whether well, you're, you know, on If you watch his videos, yeah. if anybody believes... Well, she Tim is, Pole always says as a troll because no woman goes into the woods with high heels. No woman describes their genitals as a Barbie pouch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not again. I think it's fucking funny as shit. So I, 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 I think yeah. that the, the the first what was one of the first videos that somebody pointed out was like I've been a female for a day and I spent my whole day spending stuff on, like he basically was being a stereotypical asshole mm -hmm. about women. Yeah, no, it was like instantly I, because he, he was having his period and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like tampons and shit. It's fucking pro wrestling, dude. It's yeah. pro wrestling. Oh, yeah. What I'm seeing on that side is like, holy shit, they're doing pro wrestling better than pro wrestling. And the, and the zeitgeist has taken that over. Pro wrestling used to always be the zeitgeist. Oh, yeah. Pro wrestling used to have the fucking guy come down, the Iron Sheik, when we're in a fucking oh, war. Oh, yeah, dude. Dude, the Iron Sheik almost got murdered by several families because their sons and daughters died in Desert Storm. Yeah. Dude. Or yeah. Maybe, maybe not Desert Storm, but the point. Yeah, well, sure not that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the point is, is like, you no. come down. Iron Cheek would just be like, "Fucking, uh, I don't give a shit about America." And and you're like, "Wasn't Desert what? Storm?" Uh, I can't remember what what war it was, but he was Iranian, right? So yeah. he was the Sheik, and he would say, "Hey, I, I don't care about America." That's what I'm All saying. Oh, the real heat came. That was heat. The real heat came when. Sergeant Slaughter turned on America. Oh, yeah. And that's that another was great. That was so fucking, there was so much yeah. heat, dude. The heel turn, and again, uh, everybody, I mean, duh, all Kogan. Oh, yeah. Nobody thought that guy was going to be a fucking heel. So, kudos to fucking. That was fucking perfect, by the way. Kudos that was to his fucking song. Eric Bischoff or whoever decided to do that. That wasn't Eric Bischoff. I don't, I, well, it was probably Scott Hall or something. That some was shit. WWE, bro. What the fuck you mean? WWF. Hmm? I am a real. No, it's heel turn. And WCW. Oh, and, oh, and WCW. Yeah. Oh, fuck, To make it yeah. fucking flavorful. Like, dude, WCW is cookie cutter as shit for a while there. It was like, all right, even though the. Obviously, the Edge was the NWO. The well, Wolfpack, the Edge was, that was starting to come in. Kevin it Nash, Scott Kevin Hall. Nash, and Scott Hall. Obviously, and they're and they're they are two that once they got creative, I guess control. Well, they uh, they were fucking, realizing, hey, let's let's turn this fucker. They up. broke the fourth wall so many times. Yeah, so many promos, which forced WWE to do the same. And, yeah. and WWF at the time, um, I guess. Either way, all of that was long form. Yeah, you had to watch the whole fucking episode because guess what. You didn't have uh, DVR. No. You didn't have the shit. You had commercials. Oh, fuck Which, yeah. by the way, I, it's kind of so weird that, like, basically, uh, even though, like, I guess the best way to say it is cable. Cable costs so much, and people were like, fuck that. I'll just do the internet, right? And then internet was, like, great for a while. And now everything's probably even more than cable that I'm paying for. Yeah. If really? fucking, they got it. <laughs> they fucking got it. Oh, yeah. I'm getting commercials on some of them. <laughs> I'm like, what? Even though they're, like, two minutes. I'm like, this is going to go... They gave an inch. So I guarantee it's not going to be just two minutes. It's going to be fucking two hour long fucking ad. What was, yeah. uh, anyway, what was the fucking, that was my uh, bitch. there was a, a dating show where the guy knew it. It's like the host. Joe like, Schmo show. See you in two oh. and two. It was two minutes and two seconds in the break and he'd be back. Oh, okay. He would say that. See you two and two. Son of a bitch. Right. He was on ads. ads. <laughs> I like, I like that Netflix model and I thought it was great. Yeah. Because, uh, again, I just wanted to watch basically shows without fucking ads. But then I think about it and I go like, well, the ads kind of showed you what the, the culture was doing. You know? Yeah, it does. And, it and, actually... and, it, and it does 
now think about like if cookie you, cutter is shit. Think about if yeah. everybody recorded uh, raw every fucking night had every raw on VHS and you can go back and watch all the shit that you're like oh my god I fell into that trap I fell yeah. into like that was the fucking toy or that was the video game that was being pushed I remember it yeah you know it was what I'm great. saying uh, and, and that's that's basically what ruined the world by the way ads <laughs> advertisement <laughs> Yeah, is what ruins the world, Bill which is Hicks. hilarious. Bill Hicks. Because as a person who would love to sell this song and music and stuff, I have to like advertise it, I guess. But uh, who takes a chunk of that pie? I don't fucking know. Facebook, whatever you're adding to right. Google, you know. Uh, but we're at the hour mark, my man. So, oh, the plug. You got the West High one. Yes, sir. 512, that's this week. Uh, it's Friday. That's Friday, baby. Yep. And um, then um, I think CW I have a Pro, C- May twenty seventh. I also think I have a CSW there nineteenth. Hang on one second. Let me make sure you have to send me that one. Um, put it up on the website. CSW. And listen, fools! I hope you're freaking checking out the website because the website seriously is going to literally show you how to support us. It's also straight up the easiest hub. You go straight there. You can, uh, you know, you can uh, check out the latest podcast. Uh, we haven't had a lot of extras lately, but I think that's because most of us are busier than busy, and that's the best way to say it. Seriously. So uh, the extras are normally, if we have time, we stay over and maybe talk about uh, whatever things that aren't necessarily um, uh, PC. <laughs> Even though everything we say on this podcast is not PC. Uh, if, it, by the way, just to say, like and subscribe, which I never say, but if you guys continue to make this uh, a bigger thing than it is, uh, we might get canceled. So I guess that'll be, that'll be like our su- uh, success. Is yes. Once we get like a, a red flag or whatever the hell they call it from YouTube and they, they say, hey, uh, you guys can't do this shit anymore. You said something bad about Dylan Mulvaney or whatever, even though we didn't. But uh, no. yeah, if they just no, like. No, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah. 519, uh, March 19th. And... Yeah. That's not up there yet. You're going to have to. Yeah, it. that's the CSW show, Chicago Style Wrestling. Uh, after. No, well, which, again, if we do next week podcast, I'll be putting that over as well. So this week coming up this week is the one for SCW at West High School in Davenport, Iowa. All of the proceeds go back to West High Athletics. None of the wrestlers make any money. None of the company makes any money. It all, it all goes back right back into the school for their athletic. I assume I'll have this out before then, and I want to say, though, that I'm really happy that you guys are doing that. I know that's probably a push from Deer, right? Dearborn? Yeah. Okay. Dearborn and Shooty. They're both okay. they're both teachers at the school. And they're both uh, the coaches, right? Yeah, coaches the, as well. So, good for you guys, and hopefully you continue that, because um, I, I think, especially with, um, you know, just knowing humans, reach out to your brother or your sister and say, you know, hey, do you want to do this podcast? Uh, anybody watching, like, yeah, if you if you think you're you're doing something uh, that you you want to talk about that you think is uh, of merit here, it doesn't always have to be pro wrestling. Doesn't no. always have to be music. That's why we put the life in the title of the show is because maybe you have something going on that's super interesting. I'm gonna make fun of you, and I'm gonna <laughs> make jokes. Yeah, and it's maybe you don't like me when you leave, but that's okay. I think nine times out of ten you will. But hey. The 1%, they own the world. So fuck them! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's been wrestling with Music and Life, and I want to say that we obviously have so many people that should be on this show. Hit us up, brothers and sisters, and we need to have you on the next one. Uh, we're, we're approaching, what is this? 42. So yeah. 50. On the 50th episode, we're going to make that awesome. I don't yeah, know man, how. for real. Because that is, you know, uh, that's wow. half of I was about to, put over, <laughs> about to put over one of my friends. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to put him over real quick because he's also in the business and uh, a fucking musician. Hang on one second. Edit it. Derek Martha. <laughs> Derek Martha is a fucking referee. 
He's the most unique looking because of his look. But also... Derek, let me give you a little uh, advice. He is if in a band. If you don't have a shirt that says Martha Fucker, fuck off. Go ahead. <laughs> but uh, Derek, if I'm not mistaken, I have to find it for sure. He is in a metal band. And I talked to Lyndon about it because I saw him. And I was like, dude, what the fuck, man? That guy looks like a referee that is... This know, is sounding familiar now. Yeah, he plays drums, bro. He's a drummer. That's okay. him. Okay. So in the picture, that's him playing drums. Yeah. Well, put but it like the camera. Yeah. All right. Well, your camera. That's that's Derek playing drums, but also he yeah. is an AAW referee, uh, pro wrestling Tell revolver. Him he gets more drums. What the fuck was that? Looks like a <laughs> snare and a tom and a, two cymbals. What the fuck are you playing? Here's another cocky? shot of him. That is not metal. That's got to be pop punk or some so, shit. Like when oh, he doesn't have that blood. giant beard. What's funny is the first I time I met him. Tag at first. first time I met him, <laughs> actually, I fucking was like, "Dude, you know who you look like?" He was like, "No, I don't know what you're gonna say." And I'm like, "You look like Adam D." Because without the beard, yeah, he has like a small beard and like his head's kind of shaved and he's got glasses. Hmm. I was like, "Dude, you look like Adam D." Kills which engage. And Dude, like, you know who you look like? What? Shug Project drummer, you bitch. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. For real. Yeah, because uh, Trevor's way too busy, dude. Fucking Trevor at the lever. Uh, I'm sure Derek is too, though. But oh, like, yeah, I'm sure. And, and again, if, if, if we have time, I think especially because you just did a heel turn, we almost have to. And, and I this, use Derek. I'm putting my- this out on the podcast. This is for you have to record your vocals on our new song. Oh, yeah. Okay? And, and and again, guys, let's laugh. He's lived next to me two seconds right there. <laughs> and <laughs> literally uh, on the other side of this wall, he lives yeah. there. And we still haven't done the Shook Project vocals. I know. It's fucking we insane. We suck so bad. Listen. <laughs> um, we'll also, make it a night. We'll plan it. We get, we'll get the fucker done. <laughs> We won't be too drunk, but we'll definitely have a buzz. Yes. Because that's the whole point of the shit project is it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be fun, you know? Exactly. Uh, and and we'll, we'll put that out. We have so much else to do, but I think those things, once that falls into line, it, it, it pretty much goes in two seconds. And then, uh, you know, send it off and have it, have it professionally mastered. I think uh, that would be your theme. Oh, that'd be fantastic. You know, Undertaker yeah. Heart. Oh, yeah. Which we could also, like, again, we could make it. <laughs> uh, we could make it better for your entrance, you know? Yeah. Uh, and maybe maybe it doesn't work because, you know, again, maybe that's maybe that's a little too uh, cool. No, and you want to be a non-cool heel. I want to be the coolest heel of all time and, mm-hmm. like, uh, take a giant shit on all you marks at home jerking off thinking that you know pro wrestling but you don't go to live shows fuck you armchair quarterback you. Have exactly good fucking have good mosh pitting <laughs> 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 alright have good mosh pitting <laughs>